Have you ever wondered how orbits work? For example, why do spacecraft on liftoff turn sideways as they gain altitude and move into space? And once in space, how is it they can stay there without continually burning fuel? Well, the answer is pretty simple, but it's probably easier to illustrate than explain. So today we're going to do just that. We are now in an amazing virtual planetarium of the entire universe called Space Engine. And we can use Space Engine to virtually travel to any point in the universe and look at things. Some of what one might see in Space Engine are 3D interpretations of photographic images. And some things, such as objects in distant galaxies, are virtually generated based on the best information available. Space Engine is a remarkably powerful and useful tool. And it would have been sci-fi only a couple decades ago, but it is an amazing tool for anybody interested in the study of astronomy. And of course, right now we are looking at Earth. And I'm going to use Space Engine to set a futuristic shuttle a few thousand kilometers above the Earth. There we go. Now some persons have the misperception that when things are off in space above Earth, they float as if gravity has a range. Gravity basically has infinite range, though its influence declines over distance. But it doesn't decline much this close to Earth. Now, right at this moment I have time paused in Space Engine, so nothing's moving. But watch what happens when I unpause time. As you can see, our shuttle immediately begins to fall toward Earth. That's because there is no lateral motion. The gravity of Earth is pulling straight down on the shuttle, even thousands of kilometers above Earth. So, the shuttle begins to fall toward the planet. We can switch to an orbital trajectory screen to get a bird's eye view of what's happening. The green circle portrays the origin point. The green ray portrays the trajectory. And, of course, Earth is the source of gravity here. The shuttle is falling from the green circle toward the center of Earth's gravity. Now the pull of gravity does decrease with distance, but gravity effectively has an infinite reach. So even on the other side of the universe, Earth would technically exert some gravitational influence on any object. Of course, on the other side of the universe, closer objects would exert more gravitational pull, and the influence of our minuscule planet would be infinitesimal. Not even that, really. Now our little ship is not doomed to hit the ground because our ship has thrusters. Let's go ahead and establish an orbit. The key to creating an orbit is to achieve velocity that is lateral to the center of gravity. In other words, while gravity might be pulling our shuttle down toward the Earth, we need to move sideways to that pull. It doesn't matter what specific direction as long as it's sideways. As lateral velocity is built up, the path of the object will curve around the source of gravity. And to achieve orbit, the object must continue to accelerate until the path goes all the way around the source of gravity without ever touching it. In this way, the object will come to move sideways away from the source of gravity as fast as it falls toward it, so it can never actually get any closer. Alright, let's start making this orbit. I'm going to tell the shuttle to fly at a 90 degree angle to the pull of gravity. Or, in other words, toward the horizon. Notice the horizon bar on the right. It's going to center in a moment on 90 degrees. More specifically, 90 degrees to the pull of gravity. We'll pull the Earth into view to get a better perspective on what's happening. And now I'm just going to activate the thrusters. Switching back to the orbital view, you can see that straight ray that was a moment ago pointed straight toward the Earth is now expanding out. As the shuttle accelerates, the orbit is circularizing. The bright green side of the circle toward us represents the backside or thrust side of the shuttle, and the dimmer line is the direction the shuttle is moving toward. Where the line transitions from bright to dim is the position of the shuttle. Right now, the orbital trajectory intersects with the Earth on the side toward us and on the other side. This means if we stopped acceleration right now, the shuttle would eventually crash into the planet. I'll build up a little bit more speed, but leave the shuttle suborbital and demonstrate. Notice where the bright green part of the arc intersects the dim green part of the arc. The shuttle is there, moving in the dim direction. I've turned off the thrusters, so the arc will not widen any further into a circle. The orbits will intersect Earth on the dark side. This is a suborbital condition, almost a full orbit, but the shuttle speed is not quite fast enough. The pull of gravity will draw the shuttle toward Earth faster than the lateral motion can keep the horizon falling away. This is because, ultimately, what an orbit is is free fall that never ends. Any object in orbit is always falling toward the center of gravity, but lateral motion keeps the objects moving around the center of gravity, 
so fast that it cannot progress into the gravity. Right now our shuttle is moving pretty fast, but not fast enough to outpace the pull of gravity. And so our object will crash into the dark side of the Earth, right here. Let's speed up time and observe this happening. Now we'll switch back to our orbital trajectory perspective and we'll see our poor shuttle has reached the end of its time in space and is just about to dramatically crash into the Earth. But that's the nice thing about virtual shuttles. You can crash them, nobody gets hurt. Let's put another shuttle in space and this time give it a permanent orbit. So here we are again, roughly where we were last time. And our shuttle has no lateral velocity, so it's falling toward Earth. Though, we're thousands of kilometers up, so getting there would take quite some time. But maybe not quite as long as you might think, because gravity will accelerate us all the way down to Earth. But instead of crashing into Earth due to the pull of gravity this time, we're going to go ahead and build up lateral velocity and establish a stable orbit. The first thing I'm going to do is direct the shuttle to point toward the horizon, or 90 degrees from the center of gravity. And now I'm going to activate the thrusters. I'm going to turn the thrusters up to 100% because that will give us an orbit the fastest. But we're already up in space and probably I could reach orbit even if I just turned up the thrusters to 1, 2 or 3% because it would take the shuttle a long time to fall to Earth. It has plenty of time to build lateral velocity. From the orbital perspective here, we can already see the ray is once again beginning to circularize, just like last time. The shuttle is moving sideways to the planet, building up sideways velocity. And at this moment, it's still technically falling toward the Earth, though in an arc. In the same way a baseball tossed gently might fall in an arc back to the ground. But we're continuing to build up speed, so the arc is widening, becoming flatter. In just the same way that, if we threw that baseball much harder, the increased speed would cause the baseball to fly a much flatter trajectory. You've heard the term frozen rope? Well, the baseball would fly straight-ish toward whatever it was thrown at. Not truly straight, even a baseball thrown really fast, say a frozen rope kind of throw, is going to have a little arc to it. But as we continue to build speed, the arc will get to be less and less, until finally, the arc never makes any points of contact with Earth at all. And at that point, we have a stable orbit. We can see from this perspective, we're nearly there. A few more moments and we'll have enough velocity that our orbits will be stable. For an orbit to be stable, it doesn't have to be perfectly circular. It just has to reach the place where no point of it comes into contact with the object that is being orbited, neither the object nor its atmosphere. And now pulling around to the dark side of the planet, you can see the orbit has just pulled away from Earth altogether. The orbit is now stable. If I turned off the thrusters now, our shuttle would continue to orbit the Earth in an elliptical orbit indefinitely but I'll continue to apply thrusters and circularize the orbit. This will take two or three minutes real time, so I'll accelerate the passage of time here. Now we have a nice, stable, circular orbit, and I've shut down the shuttle's thrusters. Now I'll accelerate time even more, and we can see how our shuttle, without thrusters, carried only by its own momentum, maintains its speed and distance over the center of gravity. In other words, it has achieved stable orbit. Let's say I wanted our shuttle to set off into interplanetary space and do some exploring. I would need to escape Earth's gravitational influence, and to do this, I need to achieve escape velocity, which is simply to say, gain enough speed that the pull of Earth's gravity cannot bring me back. So I'll point the shuttle prograde, or into its orbital direction, and apply thrusters. It will take several minutes to build up that much acceleration, so once again, I'm just going to accelerate time. As I apply thrust, you'll see the orbit elongates. And where the orbit appears to break is the point at which our shuttle's acceleration has outpaced the pull of Earth's gravity. So even if the engines were shut down now, when the shuttle reaches that point in its orbital arc, it will glide away from Earth, Earth's 1G of gravity no longer able to pull it back. But what if I chickened out and decided I didn't want to go off and explore space? I want to stay here nice and safe, orbiting around my home planet. All I would have to do is turn the shuttle around so that its engines point into the direction of the orbit. This is known as pointing in terrograde. Let's do that now.
then I'll fire up the thrusters once again and decelerate. Losing speed will prevent us from being able to escape Earth's gravity. And we'll just continue to decelerate until we have resumed our nice, safe, stable orbit. This will also take several minutes to accomplish, so I'll just speed up time. But the moment the two points of the orbit join back together, forming a complete circle, even if the circle was elongated, we are traveling slow enough that we can no longer escape the pull of Earth's gravity. Meaning we're not going off exploring, we are safely locked in orbit around our home planet. And once here, we never need to apply thrust again. Unless our shuttle accelerates or decelerates, it will be locked into this orbit indefinitely. Forever falling toward Earth, but moving away laterally as fast as it falls so that it can never get any closer. And that, my friends, is orbital mechanics in a nutshell. Everything in the universe that orbits anything else works like this, whether it's a satellite launched by humans into space, or a natural satellite such as the moon orbiting Earth, or the asteroid moons that were captured by Mars countless eons ago, or the many moons of Jupiter, or the planets around the Sun, every orbit works just like this. The object ever falling toward a gravitational source, but moving laterally away as fast as it falls, so that it never gets any closer.